Hi everyone, it's Ethan McKinley, your host of the Two Minute Terminator. It's episode 9 and we're going from minutes 16 to 18. Oh, hello. What is this? Uh, this is the Luke Millian Arnold Schwarzenegger song. It's kind of cool, huh? It's amazing. It's got a nice uh, lounge lizard 70s feel to it. Lizard. Who's that on the other line? Who's that talking on the other mic? It's Ellie Fitzgerald. Who's she? She's the co-host oh, of excellent. the uh, T3 2T podcast. Down. Up. What is this? Down, Seriously. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Those are all clips from Pumping Iron, which you've never seen. Uh, this song will be linked uh, below in the show <laughs> notes. Uh, in case you find it so catchy, you need it in your life. To which I will sh should be shazamming. <laughs> I need this in my life for sure. Down. It's cool, huh? Yeah, it's awesome. Right, yeah, uh, I'm Ethan McKinnon, the host of the Two Minute Terminator. Ellie Fitzgerald sits across from me. We Hello. are going from minutes 16 to 18, the we two are. minutes bridging that gap. And it kind of begins with Arnold Schwarzenegger getting in. I keep saying it, don't I? Arnold Schwarzenegger getting in his uh, truck. And as we discovered at the end of the last episode, what was it underneath the sunshade as he pulls it down? In Terminator 2, of course, it shows us keys. that people put the, put put the keys, keys there. down and get the keys. Get the keys. I mean, in real life, you'd never find keys uh, above a sun visor, would you? Oh, God, no. No. And this time, movie physics fails, and they find uh, a lovely watch, basically. One of those, like, uh, diver's watches. Why would you put a watch up there? I don't know. Anyway. It doesn't make any sense. Hit. So, yes, oh. hit the music. <laughs> yes! I did it. Howdy, stranger. Don't say howdy, stranger, to me. I'm Chief Master Sergeant William Candy. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! This is Arnold. Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are going from 60 minutes to 80 minutes. And uh, it begins with Arnold finding a lovely watch behind the sun visor of his car. Which is accurate. And it ends with uh, Kate Brewster, played by the lovely Claire Danes, a good actress at least, uh, getting out of bed because she's been called to the surgery. So is that the Terminator testing that his internal clock is the same as that other clock? I don't know. I would have thought he wouldn't have needed a watch no. to do that. And maybe to make check the date, maybe, to make sure he's arrived at the right place, I guess. Yeah, but, but would he need to? I don't know, because I guess all Macs and stuff on the planet are all linked to Greenwich Mean Time or whatever, aren't they? Or it's Eastern like, Standard It's time. like nowadays, you don't have to actually turn your clocks back because computers do it automatically for you. No, that's true. So I would have thought when he arrived, that would all be linked into whatever satellite or any information around him via Wi-Fi. With him? Uh, yeah. Did Terminators have their own internal Wi-Fi? I would have... I Yeah. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> I wonder who they get that through, though. That'd be Sky, Virgin Media. Definitely not Sky. Skynet. <laughs> Better fucking <laughs> signal than Sky. So, uh, uh. yeah. Well, Ellie, remarkably uh, low energy. <laughs> I've just, just turned a blank. Well, you've been watching the clip. What can you glean I'm from really, this? really hungry. Um, so... The first bit that I wanted to say was the fact that we kind of covered in the last episode, and that is, does the Terminator have memory? Because he then finds the black sunglasses on the dashboard mm. and puts them on, and it's almost, he almost pulls a face of kind of like recognition, mm. I feel. So I'm guessing that there is some kind of like internal memory. But he wouldn't have an internal memory because it's a different Terminator. No, but what I mean is, is they all, I think like the Borg, once one of them has an experience and it kind of learns from it, mm. they are all kind of assimilated together. So they all will end up having that kind of memory. That's what I think. Okay. What do you think? No. No. It's a totally <laughs> different Terminator with no connection unless John Connor like when, oh. But they're all made in the same factory, aren't they? Yeah. But why would a Terminator be taught to think that sunglasses were cool and or hid your identity? No, but it's like stored in some kind of like memory file, which every single okay. Terminator... So they How don't make the same How would a Terminator from the past send the signal to the future? Especially when it never went back to the future to convey that information or even survived. Terminator 1 Because was Skynet pulled. know everything. Terminator 1 was destroyed except for the arm and the chip. They were destroyed in Terminator 2 along with the Terminator from Terminator 2 in the Iron Foundry. Ethan's unbuttoning his trousers. Uh, we are listening to the main theme from the movie Eraser. I think we should probably turn it down a little bit. Uh, it's on its lowest, but... 
Remember these mics? They pick up this like bit around this, them. This, this, this. It was a, a different mic. It pick up the sound in the room, but we've not got those kind of mics, Ellie. So, what do we think <laughs> about the fact that um, the uh, the female Terminator? What is she? The TX. TX or the Terminatrix? Why does she go for the affiliates uh, um, of John Connor before she goes straight for John Connor? Uh, it's just, I guess. If she couldn't get to John Connor, these are other people that obviously made him help him fight the war. So these are his lieutenants and generals and people that worked in close proximity to him. <coughs> so she's going for John Connor as well. I mean, <coughs> you would have thought her first mission would be to ignore these people until she killed John Connor. Yeah. And then got these, as a matter of fact, just in case they kind of rose in and filled that position for what for whatever reason. If, yeah, but if you, yeah, I, w I would have eradicated John Connor as a... F as Primal tar uh, primary target. That's what I would have done, and I would have thought that would be the most efficient thing anyway. Yeah, no, absolutely. I I couldn't agree more. Is it because she's a female Terminator though? Ooh. I I guess it serves the story better that to convey to the audience that she's just a random killing, ma not a random killing machine, but she is like cold bloodedly killing people. Jose Barrera. So it kind of it builds her rep really as a villain because up to this point you you're competing against Robert Patrick and Arnold Schwarzenegger, two people who gave remarkable performances mm. as Terminators. Then you've got this like chick playing the Terminatrix, who doesn't quite pull it off. No, I don't think she looks mean enough. Yeah. It also looks like she's got a cold sore on her lip as well when she pulls up to the burger bar, and she yeah. goes, she turns and goes, Jose Barrera. Yeah. She's kind of got this like red patch on her lip, and I was like, oh, cold sore. I don't think it's Christina Lopez's Bam, fault herpes. as such, but it's uh, I suppose it's a difficult thing to pull off when you've got that legacy behind you. You've got a kind of like almost like every time an actor gets uh, the role of the Joker, he'll always be forever compared to the previous Joker. Do you know what I think would have been really interesting? And I know Linda Hamilton said she would never do another Terminator, but if they'd actually, <laughs> if they'd actually sent back a female Terminator that that looked like Sarah Connor. I yeah, that would be cool. I reckon that would have been really good. Oh, yeah. that would Because then that like would have really fucked with John Connor's mind. Yeah. I mean, that would have flipped it all on its head. That yeah. was a great idea, Ellie. Well done. I'm actually impressed. That was <laughs> a really good idea. Because Linda Hamilton could then carry on, I guess, the character she portrayed in the second exactly. one. But to a, a more, like, blood, like a cold bloody degree. Exactly. Because she was already halfway there, wasn't she? Dr. She Silver would be like, I knew it all along. She was crazy. N e knowing, even th though he didn't know that's not her, it would be a machine of facts. She's got a chest full of wires. Yeah, but it's a lovely chest. <laughs> lovely chest, full of wires. Yeah, no, it's uh, that's a good idea, Ellie. That I know. I mean, they kind of <laughs> did that in Terminator. Your face of disbelief. <laughs> and because she's military, as, you know. But no one's. Ever, I've never read that in any forum, and no one's ever thought of that that like she would be made like the best next Terminator as a way of kind of like it would be difficult for John to do anything against her because obviously it's just like Star Wars. Yeah. And I'm linking in Star Wars that we were meant to see. <laughs> An, an hour from now, I was no doing less. so well. Yeah, we went to go and see uh, Star Wars in IMAX 3D. The, the IMAX screen in England, basically, the only one that really counts for anything because there's so many Limaxes, inverted Lime. commas, where the screen isn't quite the same size. Uh, I booked the tickets in November for my mother. After me and my mother couldn't wait to see Star Wars, so we saw it at Christmas. We were so disappointed, sadly. She was like, well, I'm not going away to London to watch that <coughs> again. <laughs> and well, I forgot I had the tickets until yesterday. So I offered uh, for... Ellie, my co-host, to come with me, and uh, she turned it down. Well, actually, no, I was going to go, and then I realised the logistics of it, and couldn't get back in time. If if I'd missed any of those last trains, I would have been. Well, no, we could have got an Uber. Yeah. It'd have been like eighty quid or something, ninety pounds. Yeah, but that's just like s such a waste of money. It is a waste of money. I still feel the pain from those two Ubers, <laughs> even though you paid for one. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Linda, uh, Terminator. Should have happened. No, it's a good idea. Well, that, like I said, in uh, Terminator Genesis, they kind of did that with uh, by making John Connor, in a sense, uh, you know, yeah, the, the Terminator. But I'm not sure if that kind of worked. Can I just ask a question? How many drive drive-in shootings are there? Because, like, yeah, okay, you see lots of people running off, but there's no kind of backlash off this. I don't <laughs> see any police or anything. No. And also, when the kids are watching TV, yeah. so the next house she goes to, why does the TV look like it's back in the 80s? It's so grainy, and the colours are really weak. It looks really washed out. What is it a flat screen TV, though? I don't think we had flat screens, though. I got my first flat screen in 2006. It doesn't matter. I still don't like think it would have looked... I still don't think it would have looked that outdated. Really? I feel like... Yeah, the, 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 news, the news channel that they're watching, the... the 
first thing I thought when I saw that was that was almost like one of the screens in Robocop. Right. And that's 80s. Maybe TVs don't look like TVs on film, so you have to use grainy screens. Well, that's rubbish because I've seen many people in many films watching TV that don't have grainy screens. <laughs> Why are you smiling? I'm just trying to find some uh, music for to uh, carry this um, the, uh, the show through, basically. I'm so pleased that you're so focused on this. Well, I like to try and do my best. I do my best. I mean, you fucked a prom queen. Oh, that's the first time I said the F word. That's fine. It's fine. I was I was quoting. I think sure. b- I think when it sticks out like a sore thumb, usually it's when you say it with such like aggression without context. You go Bleh! and like whoa. But where does it come from? Just I don't know. Tourette's maybe. I don't know. Tourette's. <laughs> is that like chewy Tourette's? I have to say, the Eraser score that I'm actually playing in the background of this episode is Alan Silvestri's uh, score to the Arnold Schwarzenegger 1996 film Eraser, which I guess was the beginning of the end, in a sense, for Arnold. How come this particular area, it's all kind of very Mexican, Hispanic? All uh, the because in Los Angeles, you're right next to Mexico, and you get, you've got a like, large Hispanic and Mexican community there that's either there illegally or has just been there since they settled like California, essentially. Mm. Uh, so there's a very much uh, a kind of like, you know, Spanish, Hispanic, Mexican f- uh, flavor, literally, to the uh, the food restaurants there, to the look of the place in places. It's a cool place. It's nice. See, so look lovely. how grainy that looks. Oh, well, th- I think that might be an effect they put on to like make you think that it's on TV. If it was a perfectly clear screen, you'd think that would be a man talking in the streets. So you have to kind of appeal to stupid people in the audience. And this kid with the Hawaiian shirt on, his priorities are all wrong. He's like, oh my God, I think my mouth's pulled up. Hide the beers. I'd hide the semi-naked half, like, the half-naked dude that's running around in the background who looks like Billy Idol. <laughs> Put your shirt on! That looks like a really lame house party as yeah, well. Yeah, I think the Terminatrix killing people as them, as she goes is just to make her, then you go, fucking hell, she's not messing around, is don't, she? Don't mess with this chick. She's on a mission. She's going to do this. She's going to kill. She's got to find John Connor. In reality, she's a psychotic woman. Well, in reality, you'd like j- find John Connor first, and then kill these people because they're like unimportant. Really, they're not the main focal point of your mission. Mm. You're already drawing attention to yourself by killing random people hither and thither. Hither and thither. And you know, if you get busted, it's just gonna be a whole mess. How also in this scene? So we see the kids are getting shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it starts with Arnold, but then the kids are getting shot, and then we go to uh, Claire Danes, who's in bed with her. Weeks Mark Fragmentality. Yeah. Yeah. And her phone vibrates. Back then, on those particular kind of phones, how would you link up a, an alarm from a shop onto your phone? How does uh, she. Like maybe a pager? I don't know. It's an interesting uh, thing. Yeah, Let's not, see if it's a cost. She's not a duct. The first piece of trivia I have for the episode Trivia Schmivia. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> The star-spangled glasses that Arnold wears as he comes out of the strip club, along with the ones he wears when he gets in the uh, the truck, does mm-hmm. that amazing like reverse three-point turn. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, they went through multiple pairs of uh, sunglasses, and Jonathan Mosler, the director, found the star ones to be the funniest. I actually don't like the shape of the black ones that he actually picks in the end. No, they're very pinched. In fact, they're very much like uh, the Oakley, I don't know what they call the ones Tom Cruise wears in Mission Impossible 2 when he's doing the motorcycle race. I haven't seen the Mission Impossible 2. They're like super like close to your skin and wrap around. But I think doing that, it kind of gives him this funny expression on his face. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So yeah. the, ja- the jacket, no. The glasses, no. Yeah, it's all all bad. It's all bad. Yeah. <laughs> the dye job, but no. I think more than <laughs> anything, the jacket, because it weirdly, I'm sure it isn't, but it just looks really cheap. It does. But, you know, what can we say? I Also, it tries to ape the look of the second one. Well, not really, because well, it, does. it hasn't it's got a collar, does it? Because that becomes the look of the two. After the two, it's so iconic, I guess. In the first one, he wears that, like, punk jacket with the chains on it, which, you know, makes him stick out even more in a sense that he's dressed too young f- for the age of man he's actually portraying. And he's got those, like, khaki trousers on and boots up to his knees. I don't think that would have worked. But it's a hot look, though. But the second one, obviously, created... He's way more biker, isn't he? Well, because the second one was one of the biggest films of all time at the time and the most expensive production at the time, that look obviously entered the public consciousness and became so iconic. I guess it was hard for a director or even a studio to go, he needs to look like the Terminator. That's the look of the Terminator. So whether Jonathan Mosser was forced to keep that look or on, was like, I have to look like the Terminator again. So they're creating a new look. They did that, of course, with Terminator Genesis. I would have thought he would look, bu- look better 
in all the leathers with mm. the sunglasses on, then there's like some old badass. Why well, he was in that kind of bell staff, kind of oh khaki God. army jacket. Oh no, it was just bad. And the powder blue jeans. He looked like he was going to work See, look, get a job at Home Depot. Missed it. Do you reckon that was from giving Arnie fellatio? Do you want another piece of uh, triviata? Yes, I would love some. You were gonna, he almost, he was gonna form the the, the playful dance of like a fact attack yeah. went across. And your then lips I realised like that you've changed it, so I can't do it anymore. I, I know you hate the, the gun noises. I do, but just change it up. You change it up. How many gun impressions can you do? Right, this is the only Terminator film. Cock ups. That's my new favourite thing. This is the only Terminator <laughs> film not to mention <laughs> Kyle Reese at all. Whoa. Why? Why would they not? I don't know. Ooh. Ooh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> It's like an eight. This uh, the term, the uh, I'll link it beneath. But the uh, Eraser Suite by Alan Silvestri, who did uh, the Judge Dread soundtrack, which this sounds almost it's exactly Sylvester like, except for this kind of like wah wah guitar. He also did Back to the Future stuff. I'll link it under the show. Uh, right. What's the name of that um, that weird robot cat? The toy. Weird robot cat. Weird robot cat. Whenever I've seen those documentaries about how um, revolutionary robots are. Yeah. That cat is always in it. I swear there's like a special name for it. Robo Sapien? Yeah, but it's a cat though. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> or a dog or some kind of... Uh, yeah, this uh, film doesn't mention Kari's. However, we are now at the cock up section of the show. Cock up! Oh shit, we remind me. After we, will we finish get the a show, we need yeah. to order a hotel doorbell. <laughs> or something. Or a ding dong. A, d <laughs> uh, a ding dong for a cock up. Uh, <laughs> right before the naked terminator seizes the clothes of the stripper the stripper is clearly wearing a leather jacket and blue jeans when the terminator enters the outside of the building what does that mean who wrote this uh he's wearing complete leathers including leather pants <gasps> so the two continuity is there are the music as he leaves the shack doesn't change doesn't and it's change playing macho for man beats. quite I'm carrying these over from the last one by the way shouldn't mm. do that but it still kind of works Right, cock up number two. Cock up. Bing, bing. <laughs> uh, when the TX kills Jose Barrera at the fast food restaurant, the drive through window is on the wrong side of the building. How would they know that? Uh, the TX could have driven the wrong way, but it was shown at the speaker driving in the direction that the drive through should have been. But when she actually does it, she's in reverse. Ah, okay. So imagine her driving in. The speaker is there, right? Yep. But she's coming out when she shoots him. Oh yeah. No, that does but no, that does make sense. So unless she went Jose Barrera into the thing, pulled out of the drive a little bit, drove and then around, it went, went back all the way back around back again. Around, yeah. Ridiculous. Cock up number three. Cock up. <laughs> That's the name Jose joke. Barrera <laughs> is misspelled. Bar Who did the bloody type for this film? <laughs> They spelled wrong the other day. Briefs, didn't they? Briefs. They got briefs spelled wrong in the credits. Uh, the name Jose Barrera is misspelled as Barrara uh, on the robot screen, yet it says match. Uh oh. So basically, if you look here, Ellie, on the screen grab, and if you look at the actual picture for this episode, is uh, like bonded to, you'll see the uh, the name badge at work, the work like the employee badge from the restaurant of Jose Barrera. According to the thing, it says Jose Barrera on his badge, and it says Jose Barrera spelled wrong on the screen. So oh, my. Let's ha let me Is Jim's a real place? Jim's? Mm. I'd imagine so. I like the symbol, like the cosmic kind of symbol. Well, there's lots of kind of like all the burger restaurants in London. There's loads of famous ones. There's even like a famous hot dog one that people queue around the bloody... Uh, I don't like hot dogs. Uh, why? I don't like the plasticky taste in uh, meat. Mm. Having said that, though, I mean, the, the American hot dogs are quite good. When they just slather, like, all the onions. Don't you like those dirty hot dogs from the guys in the street? Which I've never had don't wash one. Their hands? You've never had one of those in no. the middle of a city? Oh, my God. The one hot dog I did enjoy was when I went to the German Christmas market in Birmingham about three years ago. Mm. Uh, and I got a hot dog from there, but it was like a full-on brat bratwurst sausage. It was literally the length of oh, my the arm. the Birmingham Christmas market? Yeah. 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 Have you ever been to it? Uh, I used to work, walk through it a lot, and I think my girlfriend at drama school at the time ran off with one of the guys that ran one of the stores. <laughs> oh, God, now I'm just remembering that clip that you sent me of those blokes that work on the waltzes at uh, fairgrounds. <laughs> Fanny magnet. <laughs> I've never had so much beaver in all my life. Yeah, 
My mates, they come on, they look under, they look, what was it? They it look under the floor and they just see my ass and her nipple. Ridiculous. <laughs> you should put that clip in. I'm trying to find it. It was on the uh, the Knut Cave on Facebook, so yeah. I couldn't dr- rip it from anywhere. But I'm, I'm sure we can find it. Yeah, but you recorded it and sent it to me, so I can just send it back to you. Ah, uh, yes. Can I just say, I'm really upset. Today I learned that one of my favourite films is going to be remade, and they're casting... So my favourite film being Labyrinth. <laughs> Not necessarily remade. They say rebooted. They're going to reboot it, and the consideration... Uh, There's no consideration. I made that up. They're just rebooting it so far. I don't know who they'll get to replace Barry. You I told Elliot it would be I've Justin been Timberlake. panicking all day and just thinking, no, they can't possibly do this. Not JT. Big respect to you, JT. You're a, you're a bit of a dude. I'm not really into the music of pop, but you have written some catchy tunes. <laughs> Musically quite talented. Plus, he featured in a couple of the Lonely Island songs. So any artist that can take the mickey out themselves and not take themselves too seriously gets big kudos in my book. Well, you just saw Return of the Jedi and you've seen all the Star Wars films now. You're unmoved by all of them, I guess. I liked sense. the third one. I just actually quite I enjoyed it. That's because you remember it from being a kid there, right? A little bit. It's the, I think it's the Ewoks. There was, there was a point today where you asked me... All the male listeners now are just going, oh my <laughs> God. This is why George did it. <laughs> What's my favourite Ewok called? Wicked W. Warwick. Wicked, that's it. I keep wanting to call him Wicky, as in like Wicky Lee. Warwick Davis. <laughs> Warwick Davis. Uh, cock up number don't, four. Don't you know Warwick Davis? Uh, I met him. And oh, I you know, know the other famous... J- um, I know, I know I was a few, say Gremlin. I know a few little people actors <laughs> who are connected to Warwick. So yes, by proxy, I know <laughs> Warwick through someone else. But oh my yeah. God. I've only met him once though. Okay. But no, you actually were worried today that there was something wrong with me. You went, Ellie, you're right. I went, yeah, man, I'm just watching the film. Now, you always know when I my attention is taken by a film because I don't talk for like five minutes. You Yeah, you only stopped talking really at the end, though, when it was Luke and Vader battling in the Empress throne room. That was pretty epic. I will not fight you, father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my brother. Cock up, Sexy. number four. Cock up. Bing, 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 bing. In the TXPOV... Where oh. she examines Jose Barrera's retina and name tag. His surname on the tag is spelled differently from how it is in the TXPOV. This is another same version of what I just said, essentially. Yeah. This may not be an error, however, as name tags often get misprinted, as any employee in a cheap chain restaurant will tell you. Well, that's, that's not rubbish. really true. That, no, because you go, they go, here's your badge, Jose. You'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, you, the ba- the, you spelled it wrong. And they go, oh, I'm sorry, I just changed the sticker on it. Also, can I point out something that's probably also cock-up number five? Well, cock-up number five might be the cock-ups themselves beep, because beep, beep, beep. I can't see on that. Am I am I going crazy? Barrera, Barrera, Barrera. It's spelled correct on the computer, but not on his thing. Why? Hang on. Because oh. there's two R's there, one R there, one R there, and two R's there. Okay, I can see it, yeah. They've mixed around the amount of R's. They are absolutely right. The Terminator is dyslexic. <laughs> you dyslexic. Um, I'm doing so right, I'm not doing that. Uh, so what I wanted to say was I've never been to a fast food place and seen a person's first and then second name on their name tag. It's always just the first. I'm like, how can I help? I make them here Yeah, because if you piss anyone off that's uh, a, a customer, they can then find you. Exactly. Yeah, just Jose. I mean, obviously, they've done it because yeah, done it for she the film. needs to do yeah. it for the film, but that wouldn't have actually happened. Well, there we go. Uh, that's the episode, Ellie. It wow. was uh, short and sweet. So, but we do uh, end. We do end with uh, the killing of a frat party boy. Also, no? that looks like the lamest party. Where's Where's the naked chicks? Where's the lines of cocaine? Well, first of all, it's an American teen house party, so they'd just be drinking. The young teen Americans not take drugs. I don't know. Not as far as I know. When I was uh, in Los Angeles. La. No one really seemed to do that. It's very much a drinking culture there. They and they you heard well, of stuff like Molly, one. which is MDMA, but no one ever kind of like that I knew of or saw took it or had it on them. But that surprises me. Yeah, but like I said, it's the I think there's much more fear there of I think because you've got just say no and all that campaign from the eighties that Nancy Reagan started. But there's much more of a kind of I guess fear of drugs although weirdly and paradoxically it's the most medicated fucking nation on the planet every <laughs> every other uh, tv commercial on america american tv as far as i could see was like take hey, this and it'll make you slim yeah, take this take, and it'll make yeah, you sexy everything is take, take this, this take this yeah so pharmaceutical pharmaceutically they're the most uh, like it's the most prevalently drug because it makes a lot ever. of money it does and that's what america's all but about but then there's always there's that i guess fear of other things but, but again, like i said i i 
didn't mix with the right crowds, I guess, maybe, or the wrong crowds, however you'd like to think of it. But again, that surprises me because the age, the legal drinking age in America is like, what, 21? Mm. So I would have thought that that would make youngsters even more prone to try and get hold of drugs. Mm. Plus, yeah. drugs are safer. Well, I mean, weed, way of, more weed, of course, is legal in, well, not legal, but it's state legal in uh, California and it's state legal in uh, Colorado. Mm. But it's not federally legal yet. It should so be. So that means they can go in and kind of shut your operation down and put the owners of the shop in jail just if they want to because it doesn't fall under uh, f- uh, federal jurisdiction. It's become it's only under state jurisdiction. What are malts? Malts. Oh, malts. Mm. When you put malt in the milkshake, like Horlicksy type stuff. Oh. Have you I never been to Ed's Diner had a, a peanut butter malt? Never. Oh, God. What's Ed's Diner? Ed's Diner, the food isn't actually that good. It's a 50-style diner. Lots of oh, well, they London. do like the milkshakes and you can have anything in them, like Oreo cookies. Yeah, or and like what's good like about Shake Ed's... Away. Like what's good about Ed's and probably not about Shake Away is they bring you the tin pot bucket thing. They actually mix the thing in. Other places just pour it and go, there you go. You get one milkshake and that's it and they take it away. Oh. And they waste half of the milkshake essentially Ed's actually gives you the thing as well <gasps> so you've got where's like the closest Ed's one and a half milkshakes is I think well they're kind of everywhere now there's one actually by me weirdly uh, in Dudley Dudley at the Merry Hill Centre but there's loads of Ed's in London I mean the food isn't really that good the things they do good is like the cheesy fries they do wet fries which is uh, chips and gravy <gasps> uh, they do chilli chili fries chilli cheese fries chilli cheese bacon fries whoa the are burgers. you like? Are you endorsing? No, <laughs> that's actually okay. It's just the food's like very quickly prepared, and it's not actually that great. If you want really nice chips, I guess maybe Five Guys is my favourite for that kind of thing. See, I've no, I thought that was like a burger place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could have gone today if we. we so we're going to go next weekend because we're going to go and see Jean and pick up a painting, and we're going to go to the Anne uh, Leibowitz uh, exhibition as well. I'd prefer not to go to that, but I'll wait outside. Why? Why do you want to go? Because earlier I was at the actual event that launched that gallery, so I was in that room for like seven hours with Annie Leibovitz, the lady herself. Oh. And uh, well, I'll just go with Jean another time. I've kind of seen it. No, no, go, please. It's the only time oh, you get to You're just gonna wait together. out. You're gonna wait outside. You've been there for very long. I've got. I could hang out. Basically, I don't want to spend twenty quid on something I've seen and worked at, and been with the person who originated the the event and the artwork oh, itself. Oh, okay. Fine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not you, being you, a stick You, you in the explain mud. it to Jean. You explain it to a queen who wants to bum you. Can't blame him. You've got a loving ass. I don't think he does. That's probably not Gene's type. You really? See, I, well, I think he's into his, gay mus- men he's get into very his muscly men, though. Gay men get, I'm not muscly. I've got you chest are. Like a wet blanket. Dude, you're pretty muscly. I think you get very. Uh, chest like a wet blanket. You've you you you? got one sad boob. The gays pick their type. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what Gene's type is. <laughs> Do you reckon he's the giver or the taker? Uh, I, I don't think know, he's giver. quite a big dude. He's a big, he's, he's got a good chest. You should ask him actually. if he's a power top or a frothy party bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard that? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I think it was the frothy bottom. Just yeah. makes me think of... Frothy party bottom. Cream pies and bubble butts and stuff like that. <laughs> bubble butt, bubble butt, bubble butt. <laughs> Anyway, we digress. But we digress. What are we on? Twenty-eight minutes. Yeah. Let's round it up to thirty. But then you just—why do you do that? I don't know. It just looks nicer on the. Well, stats. I thought it was meant to be quality, not quantity. Well, I mean, the, f- the show kind of ended like five minutes ago. We're just kind of meandering now about what's happening with uh, our lives and stuff. But that's what, but that's what we want to do, though. We want there to be. All right, things you need to do with your life, Ellie. You need to go to Five Guys Burger. Yeah. Go for all in everything, and get a. Uh, Occasion fries because mm-hmm. it's like six pounds for fries there, but it comes in like a bag, like a giant bag. Like <laughs> it comes in a bag, it's like, like a giant six bag. inches deep of fries, like a bag that big. Ethan, how many times have you watched me eat fries? Do you eat chips? Not really, no. At all. Come on, chips and curry sauce. Chips and curry sauce, okay, but I like the Dude, crispy ones. I had that on Friday, by the way. <gasps> anyway. Oh my god! <laughs> Betrayal. Ultimate betrayal. betrayal. No, you didn't even save me any curry sauce. No, because I thought we were going to do a show on Friday and you just disappeared off the map and I couldn't find so I was just like, well, there's well, no point. you knew point. where I was. There's my no point died. going to yours to eat. So I ate food before I disappointedly came to find out if you weren't in and you weren't. Anyway, <laughs> tomorrow's episode, everyone. It's going to be Monday. Uh, we're going to go from, uh, we're going to go for episode 10. Ooh, finally made it. Which is 18 to 20. <clears throat> yeah. 
and it's uh, it's about John kind of getting chemically neutered. So oh, you'll, nice. You'll enjoy <laughs> that one. There's not much trivia, but we'll uh, we'll make it work. It might be just a quick show. Who knows? Who knows? It's quality, not quantity, as we've exactly. not proved with this episode. So as uh, Alan <laughs> Silvestri plays us out with a Back to the Future uh, score, as he's been playing a race over the last 30 minutes, we bid thee farewell. <laughs> I've been Ethan McKinley. I've been Ellie Fitzgerald. And this is the T3 2T. Hit the music. No, that's the other half of it. Hasta la vista. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger And I'm stupid in my head I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger